guys, it's Queen DJ, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episode one of Delicious Party Pretty Cure. Okay, so literally, I I was just scrolling, and it's been a while coming, but by the time you guys will see this, it'll be Monday, of course. I am sorry that this is like two days, a day late. Um, didn't really want that with the premiere, but I was very, very sleepy yesterday when I came home from, um having being out of baby shower and then also recording one thing and I was like yeah I gotta watch this too and I was expecting this not to really come out until like the wee hours of the morning because we didn't know um if this was going to be getting the rights like Tropical Rouge and a little bit of healing healing good as well Kira Kira and such with the Crunchyroll agreement and so last night it really kind of confirmed but I actually found out like <laughs> about like three to five minutes ago that um yeah it's confirmed that this but it, then it makes you wonder why in the world did they wait until Saturday night to unveil it why didn't they say anything um last Saturday when the final episode of Tropical Rouge came out to have Yui officially be shown up in the final episode which is a little weird because it's like the Crunchyroll version doesn't have it but the canon version aka the tv version had it so it it's already weird it, it was hella weird uh, as a matter of fact but it's okay other than that let's go ahead and get started with episode one and three two one go but yes i'm really excited about this because of course this features like <laughs> Two Seiyus now, who I like, <laughs> and a lot of other things. Ooh. That looks so good. It made me want to eat my pasta after I'm done <laughs> watching this in uh, Suzaki and Amino. Oh. Uh, get the narrator. It's interesting that it's having a narrator for this season. Oh my god, it's Yui! So she's very much like Rin. I already love her. <laughs> oh. She cute. That's a big ass bag. <gasps> ah! <laughs> Look at Bob Bob. My God! No, oh, she's so cute. Oh, and I already saw the opening of this, and mwah, mwah, 
Mwah. So good. So good. Like, I'm so excited about this. I already feel like, um, one of my subscribers already has a crush on a character in this show, aka the guy who just popped up, because, um, you know, of course, we follow each other on freaking Twitter and ish, and... <laughs> <laughs> there was this okay so I saw this fan art of him and next thing you know I'm like scrolling 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 and I see <laughs> a quote to me with the same picture and I was like oh yep yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I feel like he's gonna probably be very similar to Harry from Hakuto possibly oh my god baby but I feel like of course, he's not going to be my type because you can tell that, you know, for the other team. But that's okay. I still have my baby Harry, a.k.a. fucking Kazuma. I, I just... Kanasuba always. <laughs> and, uh, Kanasuba! <laughs> Kanasuba! First Kazuma, now darkness. Best girl darkness. Is a bad guy and pretty here and possibly, maybe, the final cure of this show. We won't know until we get to October, but I'm so excited! Her uniform's so cute! Oh my god, I like the color! Uh oh. Oh. <gasps> oh no! <gasps> she trying. If they don't release a plush of her, or all three of the animal fairies, I'm going to die. <laughs> Damn, all three of them in the set! Yeah, it's good, ain't it? Hmm. 
Yeah, you haven't eaten at all, so. <laughs> The fact that Rosemary is also played by the same man who played White Blood Cell and Cells of Work. Like, oh. The man got range. And he was in Utsuma Prinsuma too. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what we like. Now the biggest thing is that I want to see is the eye catch. Like, I'm so excited. Ah, <laughs> oh, you know, just a sudden the third. <laughs> I love him. He's so expressionless. Oh my god. Like seriously, his his expressions are there. Like I don't know if they're top top, like you know, <laughs> Laura was, cause Laura. <laughs> Phantom Thief Gentle. So cute. Mm. Okay, so Funny enough, they kind of give me Yume and um, Dude from M4 for my Katsu Stars feels. Oh my god. But only if they were re like really, really good friends and stuff. That's it. But it, it, you can tell, obviously, that he kind of has a crush on Yui. This is just making me hungry. Ah! See, all I heard was darkness. I, I don't I don't hear gentle. I hear darkness. <laughs> the best girl, the queen. Uh -huh. 
Oh. A frying pan. Awesome. Um, no, you know what? Nope, nope, nope. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Oh my god, even when she's crying, she's adorable. <laughs>
Oh, that gives me like feels to freaking um fresh. That was fucking cute. Of course, we gotta add the flying part. We're like, oh my god! <laughs> Is that a churro? Oh my god, I didn't notice. Her earrings! Her earrings! I love them! Oh my god! <laughs> Is one a fork and one a spoon? Oh! Well, that's a reference to Go Princess. <laughs> Okay, so first initial thoughts. One, I like the fact that this is very different from most of, like, the other ones. It's interesting that we have a narrator because we've never really truly had a narrator be in the show before. So I do love that. I love that a lot. Um, Yui is fucking precious, of course. I I love her already, even though this is only the first episode. I don't know if she's going to be, like, by the end of this, like, best girl material from, you know, the all-star of last season with the seiyus of that cast, but she is competing with two other seiyus who are also the heroes of this show as well, who are also people who I have seen slash heard and other things. And I think she's going to do very well because the funny thing is this is Cure Precious's Seiyu's first big, big role. She's been acting since 2020. So to get, she's now, I think like what, the second or third Seiyu who has had like a small kind of role and then Pretty Cure has been like their big break and then possibly they go on to bigger and better things after this. Or sometimes they usually retire after. Because the same thing kind of happened with, I think, um, I want to say Star Twinkle, but not really. I know Star Twinkle's um, Cure Star was a singer first. And then she went from singing to acting and such. But I am excited to see what else, you know, her saying does after this or while this show is airing. But 
I'm happy. They're so cute. Yeah, that did break. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold hold everything. We just met this man. And now you're telling me he's going to be, you know, he, he going bye-bye. No. Excuse me? Excuse me. No, 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 no. Um, Yui's friend. Of course he's going to play, like, a bigger role because of the fact that if you've seen the poster... Um, he plays, like, a quote-unquote tuxedo mask type looking character because every single time whenever I has seen that poster, everybody immediately thinks of tuxedo mask and shit. So I'm really excited to see what, what is going to be in store for him. As for, once again, my prediction of who is going to be the final cure, it seems like this girl who was voiced by Darkness to Say You slash Alice synth ugh, Synthesis 30 from... SAO alicization, she's possibly going to be that final cure. Because why in the world would you have a good Seiyu such as her as this girl that we've met in episode one? I feel like she's going to be very similar to Cure Scarlet aka Toa from Go Princess and such where she's the bad guy initially for like half of like maybe the first 15, 25 episodes, and then she finally comes in as an initiative of the final cure of this show and such. So it wouldn't surprise me because it's kind of a little obvious at the same time, but if it happens, I'm still going to be fucking happy as fuck because she is one of those saves who I really, really, really wanted to voice a pretty cure for like the longest time. And if she gets the chance, I'm, 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 I'll be excited. I'll cry. Um... What else can I say about this? I, I love the little references to, you know, other, like, Pretty Cure type series because you can tell the, um, the thank you for the meal thing is very similar to, you know, the Goki Genyo, um, and such. Same thing with the victory from Tropical Rouge and stuff where they get to, like, that have that final little thing. That was very cute. The eye cut was adorable. The opening ending, freaking flawless. Love it. I cannot wait. I mean, it's just really good for a first episode. Very, very good. I like the fact that the town for their, you know, where all the restaurants are, each one is a different type of food and ish and cultures and stuff. I, I literally cannot wait to see what in the world is going to be in store for this. Because comparing this to Kira Kira, when I reacted to that, like, less than, about almost six, seven years ago, um going into sweets and stuff and then now going into this where we're dealing with another season about food i know a lot of people were very hesitant about this because they were like it's just gonna be the same thing now like in the beginning i was one of those as well but now looking at it i feel like it's going to be very different from kira kira and such especially with like um the little recipe piece um, they're very similar to the little, I don't remember what they were called in, um, Kira Kira, but they are similar. You can tell. I do like the fact that, you know, it's a watch and stuff, um, as their, like, quote-unquote transformation item. I love the fact that, once again, we're adding technically animals into the mix, just very similar to Healing Good. It, it's really, it's still different, but it feels different, but at the same time, it feels new. Um, and adding fresh new ideas with it and such. The transformation scene, they put a toy. Once again, you put a lot of budget in that. I mean, seriously, y'all fucking um, Attack on Titan and effing Demon Slayer. Like, these three episodes really went in in their animation budgets for their respective episodes. So, even though I know I think it's the next two more episodes, um... It's just going to be Yui by herself up until Cure, I think it's Spicy, ends up coming in, aka the blue hair girl, and then Yum Yum is the last one to appear, of course. I am also very excited to see how their transformations look, how the animation quality is going to look with them, and such. Do like the fact that we also had all three in this first episode. That was good. Was not expecting that, but I love it. I love the fact that you they did that, because... With some pretty cool shows, very similar to Sailor Moon, with how they featured some of the girls eventually interacting with each other, it's just moments where it's like, okay, for Sailor Moon, it could be Usagi, like, 
as the main focus, but you've maybe seen like Amy or Ray or Mako or Best Girl Minako, I know, walking in the background somewhere and so okay, we're 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 getting close to you. You're still far away, but we're coming. But having those three technically meet up all at the same point. Good. AF. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode one of Delicious Party Pretty Here. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially next Saturday slash Sunday for episode two. Bye, guys.